Is being gay a choice or is it in the genes? One of the world's leading experts in brain research has arrived from America to tell Australian audiences that being gay may be genetic, that gay men's brains are different from those of heterosexual men. It's a highly controversial issue. Some fear that uh, it indeed, if there is indeed a gay gene, it could lead to fetal screening, abortion or other forms of anti-gay discrimination. Here's science and medical reporter Dr Gail Jennings. The sexual differences between men and women are obvious. According to scientists, and as reported in various documentaries, so too are the differences in their brains. There are um, differences in the size of the brain, there are differences uh, in, in the size of some uh, parts of the brain, uh, in, in sometimes smaller in women uh, and sometimes uh, larger. Some of these differences are said to explain the sexual attraction and behaviour of men and women. And that's led scientists to wonder if the brains of people with less typical sexual behaviour, homosexuals, are different again. The answer appears to be yes. The brains of gay men have recently been found to be physically different from those of their straight counterparts. Sex is an important aspect of human life. And there are, I've met gay people or parents of, of gay men and, and women, and they get very disturbed, many people. So I think if we could understand how sexuality, heterosexuality, homosexuality develops, I think we could help people. So science will keep trying to find out. And its new sophisticated tools that give minute details of every part of the brain, its shape, size and activity, are providing the answers. There are three, at least three reports of structural differences in the brains of heterosexual and homosexual men. And of course there's a, a major difference in behaviour, uh, which is presumably controlled by the brain. These reports show that gay men's brains are smaller in one crucial section of the brain called the hypothalamus. Yeah, that part of the brain is um, important for what's called the control of sex typical behaviour. So that um, if you look at studies in animals, for example, you'll, um, uh, when, when you manipulate areas of, uh, areas of the hypothalamus, you'll get changes in the way they behave so that females will start to uh, mate or at least pair with other females. Others have found gay men's brains to be bigger in speech and perception areas of the brain. And American professor Roger Gorski, who has led the field for many years, has found yet another difference. We found that a structure called the anterior commissure is a very small structure, a pathway that connects right and left side of the brain. We found it to be larger in women than in men, and even larger in homosexual men, larger than in women and larger than in heterosexual men. We're always in relation to, you know, the dominant culture, which is heterosexual. So there must be a reason that we're different rather than, I mean, no one sits up nights wondering, why am I heterosexual? Is it genetic or is it environment? Do my parents make me heterosexual? Do these physical differences in the brains of gay men cause homosexuality or do they just reflect it? The brain is sensitive to environmental factors, even in adulthood. So a person's lifestyle could change his or her brain, or his or her brain could change the behavior. And we don't know the answer to that. I suppose the brain structure is a, it's a two-way street. Uh, the brain structure can cause differences in thinking, but perhaps differences in the social environment can be related to structural differences in the brain. Whatever they find, if they do find differences between gay brains and straight brains, um, which is probable, I suppose. It's, it's possible that there are differences. What's going to happen to that information? That's what's most important. Um, is it going to be used for good or evil? One way of finding out if homosexuals are born gay is to look at family trees and related individuals. And individuals have studied twins, uh, identical twins, and asked if one identical twin is gay, what are the chances that his brother or her sister will be gay and it's about 50 percent and it drops markedly in non-identical twins so there is some suggestion that genetics could play a role in the causation of homosexuality it often places a lot of pressure both within that family on the parents about 
you know, oh my God, one of them said that they're gay. What can we do to stop the other one turning out? Because we know there's a, a higher chance of them being that. And how that, how the... Craig and Chris Adams gay, are brothers not, and both are gay. That's a very... Six of us in the family, six kids in the family, and Christopher and I are the only ones who are gay. Looking at the incidence of homosexuality in families, but that can also be explained in several different ways. I mean, if you take the Freudian view that homosexuality results from the, the child's relationship with the parents, then you might expect it to occur in certain families repeatedly, that, have, that families have certain structures, and not in other families. But the scientists say the family studies have led them to believe that being gay may be in our DNA, the genes we inherit from our mothers. All males have one X chromosome, and they get it only from their mother. And they went on to study the X chromosome with genetic uh, uh, procedures and found a particular region of the X chromosome, it's called XQ28, was apparently inherited in the four, 33 of 40 pairs of brothers, suggesting that in this one region of the X chromosome might be a gene that again contributes to homosexuality. It's the very tip of this chromosome, the female sex chromosome, that scientists believe may predispose men towards homosexuality. Some people have argued that if it was shown that homosexuality was a status, like gender or race, that people have no choice over, that people are, if you like, born gay, then it becomes unreasonable to discriminate against gay men and lesbians on the grounds as the, as the Catholic Church does, for example, which regards it as a form of sinful behaviour that people choose. And yeah. I think it certainly brings up that spectre of um, either, you know, uh, selection preterm, you know, having abortions based on the fact that, you know, your child has the gay gene. It would be possible to screen for that gene, just as one can screen for Down syndrome or something like that, and therefore, theoretically, abort children that were thought likely to be born with that gene. But it's unlikely to be that simple. It may start with genes, but hormones washing the fetus in the womb can make it more or less male. The developing brain must be exposed to testicular hormones early in development. So if you could envision a lack of exposure to hormones might predispose uh, a man to be gay. And the short answer, um, can you put it all down to genetics, is for me is um, uh, no, you can't. Um, because we are much more than um, our biology. Colonel Jennings having a look at our biology.